In this video, we will start with inverse trigonometric functions. You will find this on page 203 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to 6 Inverse trigonometric functions. Recall that trigonometric functions are all per periodic functions, meaning they are functions that repeat forever. Thus, none of the graphs pass the horizontal line test. So if you draw a line, it will cut more than once. And so are not one-to-one -one functions, but they are many-to-one functions. This means none of them has an inverse unless the domain of each is restricted in order to make each of them a one-to-one -one function. We denote the inverse function as y is the inverse of sin x, y is the inverse of cos x, y is the inverse of tan x. So we put a little negative one there on top, but this is read as y is the inverse of sin x or cos x or tan x. Although there are many ways to restrict the domain in order to obtain a one-to-one -one function, the following is, and this is very important, the co conventional interval use. This, this is the one that they use. This is the one that they programmed on your calculator. Okay, so basically, so y equals sin x. So they restrict it, although the graph can go on, they restrict it from negative 90 to 90. Okay, and this is the principal value interval. The y equals cos x, they restrict it from... 0 to 180, okay? And again, this is the principal value interval. And then the y equals tan x, they restrict it from also negative 90 to 90. So this is actually the odd one from 0 to 180. Okay, so this is in quadrant 4 and 1, 1 and 2, 4 and 1. Okay, the domain of this one is negative 90 to 90. The range is negative 1 to 1. And this is 0 to 180. And then the range is negative 1 to 1. This domain negative 90 to 90. And the range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Now, this is important. On a scientific calculator, the function keys, the inverse of sin, the inverse of cos, the inverse of tan, give only one solution for, for this sin, cos, or tan inverse, respectively. So that is the one that's programmed on your calculator. These are the principal values, and you'll find them in the principal value interval. And this is the reason why we were not pressing in the negative, because or not just pressing it on the calculator, we were making a cost diagram to find the second angle in a range of 0 to 360. But if you just use your calculator, just your calculator, and you press that negative in, you will get that principal value. Now let's test it. Press on your calculator. Press, okay, now remember your calculator to come to that, you must press shift or, or um, second function. So press shift, press sin, then you will see that sin, um, the inverse, and then press 0 0.5. Okay, and then you get your answer of 30. Do you see? Let's do it with this one. Press Second function or shift, press cos, then you see your inverse, and now press the negative in, because that will give you only that one value, negative 0 0.4, and that will give you 113.6. And then press shift, press tan, then you see the inverse, and then press negative 2, and you only get that value, negative 63.4. Okay, so... And that is programmed on your calculator, that principal values. Now we use the cost diagram and you use the methods in the previous videos to find the specific angles or two angles or more. So from the previous sections, you know that we use the cost diagram to find the other solutions. Now, just a technical thing. Learners should distinguish between, and I'm making it a bit bigger that you see better, If 
I say the inverse of x, then I put this negative 1 there. So the, this denotes the inverse of the sine function. And it can also be defined as arc sin x. Sometimes they call it like this. As soon as I put a bracket and I put a negative 1, it means totally something different. Then it means the reciprocal of the sin. So it's 1 over sin, and it's actually the cosec x function. Okay, so just make sure you know the difference of writing. Okay, again I'm going to make bigger and now let's look at a few interesting things still. The graph of the inverse of this restricted sine and cosine or tangent functions, re remember the graph will always be a reflection in the line y equals x. So we're now going to draw the graphs of the inverse. The line at 45 to the x-axis. Okay, so don't forget your previous chapter 3 inverse functions. The coordinate points for the inverse functions can be obtained by simply swapping the x and y values, like we always said, of the restricted trigonometric functions. Therefore, the domain of the inverse function will be equal to the range of the restricted function, just as we said in chapter 3. But the domain is always the set of x values. So although we swap it, we must write for domain x and we must write for range y values. I'll show you now when we come to that. Okay, so let's first look at the inverse, um, the graph of the inverse of sin. Uh, so that will go, and now I swap. Do you see? Now, this is my y values, negative 90 to 90, and this is my x values, negative 1 to 1, and the graph will look like this. And the inverse of, uh, the, um, graph, of course. So again, I swap. So now this is 0 to 180, and this is negative 1 to 1. Okay, and then the tan, the inverse, so again I swap, so negative 90 to 90 is now the x values, the y values is infinity, negative, positive infinity. And, and now, if you, if you look, and I, I just want to take you to the previous, basically what's happening now is I swap these two values. But, although I swap these two for domain and range, I still... For domain, I write x, not y, and for range, I write y. So domain x, y, but it's swapped. Domain x, range y. So it's swapped from the normal sin and cos and tan graphs. But let's look at an example. Let's look at the way they will ask it to you. This is, it was not in the higher level syllabus. This is new in the AS level syllabus. Okay, so let's look at a few things. Using special angles and without using a calculator. Write down in degrees, remember, special angles at 30, 60, 45. Okay. Uh, write down in degrees the value of this. So this is actually the ratio that they, and they want the angle. Okay. But let's see how it means. So this means the angle whose cosine is this. So this is the ratio, and I want the angle in the domain. And remember, the cos is going from 0 to 180. So the, the, um, the principal value interval, always. So I make my special triangle. Okay? I thought, remember it's coming from an equilateral, so it's 1, uh, so it was cut, so this is, was 2, now it's 1, 2 square root 3, 30, because it's half, 60. Okay, now what you do is you first, and you also make your uh, cost diagram. And you block out, uh, the, the, you only leave the principal value interval, okay? But now, before you start, you're first going to get your basic angle by using this. Now, you're just going to use, so first we forget about the sign. Just say, square root 3 over 2. Now, I know that cos, because I know so, so, uh, to, uh. I know cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So I know adjacent, so it must be square root 3 over 2. It cannot be this one because then it would have been cos 60 would be a half. But cos 30 is square root 3 over 2. So I know the basic angle is 30. So I just use this to get my basic angle. I know it's 30. Now I say, oh, but it's negative. Now in this area that's not restricted, the principal value interval, where is 
cos negative. Cos is positive there, but cos is negative there. So I write it here. So that angle is 30 degrees. And that will be my angle from zero. So I will say 180 minus 30, and that's 50. So this will be 150, and that's what they ask me. Okay, it's not so difficult. I want you to stop the video, and I want you to do uh, number A and number B. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, let's read. Using the special angles and without using a calculator, round down in degrees, degrees, so make sure your calculator is on degrees, mode, mode, one. Okay, now I can continue, and now I'm going to find it. Okay, now let's start with number, okay, let's start by first drawing the special angles. Now, because I see this is a half square root, I think it's the 60, if I see square root two, it's the 45. Okay, but I want to first show you how I draw it. Okay. Remember, it was an equilateral, but now it's cut, and that is 90. Okay, so that, that was 2, that was 1, and Pythagoras' theorem reads 2 squared minus 1 squared is square root of 3. This was the full one because it was the full, so that was 60. That was half, so that is 30. That's how I, that is how I construct it. Now, I start with number A. I say sin minus 1. It's actually, I want to find the angle. Okay, but now, before I, no, I because I have to memorize and I showed it here to you, the sin is there. The cosine is different. So let's make it another color. It's different. And the tan is the same. Okay. So let's just go and first make my cos diagram. Always. And, and it stays my cos. Nothing. It, it's like a puzzle, trigonometry. Every piece is part of the big puzzle. There's not things that's excluded. So I always think of the whole puzzle. I cannot throw pieces away. So... First, I'm going to block. For the sin, it's, now look here, it's going to be negative 90. Do you see? Then it's negative 90. And it's going to be positive 90. And this is going to be restricted. Okay. So it can only be there. Now I say, okay, so it's sin, where is sin negative? Now, sin is positive here. So sin will be negative here. And I draw that. And remember what I said. This special triangle is just to help you to get the basic angle. So I'm looking at that. Well, forget about the sign first. The sign was just to help you to get that. A half. Now if I stand here, sin, don't forget, so katua, so a. Or, sin is opposite over. So if I stand here, opposite over hypotenuse, no. But if I stand here, opposite over hypotenuse, yes. So I know that that basic angle must be 30 degrees. Because 30, if it's there, if I say here, uh, sin, in this case, uh, it's going to be 1 over 2. And this will be my opposite and this will be my hypotenuse. Okay, I got this. So the special triangle is just to help me with the basic angle. This sign is to tell me in what quadrant I am. I'm at the negative quadrant, where sin is negative. And now I just look at this sketch. It's because it's negative, it's there. So it's going to be, and I can actually just make it there, negative 30 degrees. That's going to be your answer. Okay, as easy as that. Okay, let's go on to number B. I'm going to clean first this. I leave my special triangle. I can even leave my soccer tour and clean this. Um, I can maybe also, if I make this smaller, clean this because I don't know what angle I'm going to work from now. Okay, it was also not that one now. Okay, let's start with number B. Number B. 
Now, one would be is the inverse of tan and its square root 3. Okay. Now, what will we start with? I think let's start by looking at the special. No, no. I, I prefer that you first have a cost type. Always. And that you fill it in. Don't forget, this is still your cost. I prefer that you first do the blocking out. It's tan. Now, tan is the same as sin uh, for the principal value interval. So, I'm going to block out this. And it's going to be negative 90, don't forget, and positive 90. That's what. So, that's my positive 90, and that's my negative 90. Okay. I'm going to get my basic angle. Let's make it yellow. A basic angle from the special triangle. Now, don't forget it's over 1. So, if I, and don't forget that tan is opposite over it. So, if I stand here, I say opposite over, oh, it's going to work. But if I stand here, opposite over adjacent, then it would have been 1 over square root, which is incorrect. It's this one. Because opposite, if this is opposite, and this is adjacent, and this is 60. So, this is going to be opposite over adjacent. Okay. So, my basic angle, no, no, I don't want to write that. That is was just to help me. I could have wrote right here. Uh, no, no, not sin. That's sin. Let's make it better. Concentrate. Turn 60 is opposite over adjacent. So, my basic angle is what? 60 degrees. That's what I want to see. Now, I say, where is tan positive? Tan is negative here, but tan is positive here. Meaning that this angle is 60. And meaning my answer is then 60. And if I want to write it better, I can say tan negative 1 square root 3, and the answer will be 60 degrees. And that's how